Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another Walking Dead video. So here's my Q&A video. This is going to be a shorter Q&A because I have to go watch Godzilla very soon and I had a bunch of stuff that I actually had to do today. So I'm going to do a shorter Q&A here. It's not going to be all the questions, but I'll do another Q&A answering uh, a lot of the other ones here. So first of all, thank you so much for all of your questions. Obviously, I do appreciate it so much. Um, if you do want to take part in these Q&As and ask me questions and whatnot, then definitely uh, make sure to go and join the Discord. I will leave a link down below in the description of this video. And um, yeah, there's chat channels there and stuff uh, a lot of people have joined we've actually had a, quite a bit of people who have joined in the last like i guess a little bit here and um yeah um it's a lot of fun we're always talking about the walking to the ones who live and really anything walking dead but let's get into the first question here so q a do you think it would have been better for them to have jadis turn over rick and michonne to beal have beal reveal the echelon briefing to them before he kills them but then pearl thorn steps in to save rick because he's family and beal kills her which sets up the story for season two it would have been nice to have Jadis not die this early into the series. I I guess I, I kind of get what you mean by uh, not killing off Jadis this early. I was a little shocked by it, and it is a little sad to have her gone already. But I think they really, like, honestly, I, I think in terms of how they came up with the spinoff, I think a part of it was, and if that's the case with all the spinoffs as well, they didn't know how it was going to be received, right? Like, they had no idea if people would be, you know, not really wanting to watch it, if people would criticize a lot of it, and... And a lot of that, you know, so I think that that was such a big thing to the spinoffs. And I think that's why in terms of them coming back, just in case it wasn't well received and, you know, no one really liked it or, or whatever. I think that they wanted to tell as complete of a story as they could here in these six episodes. And I, I really think that's probably how they manage this, right? Like they want to do more, but, you know, they want to tell a complete story as well, just in case they can't do more. And maybe they decide to not do more because a lot of the early reviewers who have watched episode six, or at least I, I've seen one reviewer say that the ending is sort of open-ended or not open-ended, but you can see how they can continue the story. Like there's definitely apparently something that is, yeah, it's it's like you, they can definitely continue the story. I don't remember the exact story, but it's definitely like there's they're able to, you know, do a continuous of the story for a season two if they wanted to so I, I don't know for me i'm okay with jada's dying i i really am i think that you know it's time for newer characters and i really like that character she was really amazing and uh yeah i don't know for me personally i'm okay with it q a so far do you think that episode five was your least favorite episode to me it felt way too chaotic introduced random characters that weren't needed and overall felt like it was from the later seasons of the original show and killed off yet another good character way too early to have their potential fully explored. Okafor had some potential, but I was okay with his death in the end as it set the story for Rick to follow in his footsteps. But I don't see the point of killing off Jadis here. Uh, yeah, I guess I, I get your point in terms of... Well, this is the way I view it. It's like, you know, like there's a lot of characters obviously at the CRM, and you, and you do want people there that are sort of, I guess, higher up, you know, besides Major General Beal. Because besides him, like, who else is there? Like, there's Pearl Thorne, but there's a lot of leaders there. So I'm really looking forward to the finale as well, because I think the finale, you know, they're holding a summit there at the Cascadia Bays. Maybe we meet a lot of new leaders there. You know, maybe there's some potential for a season two at that point as well. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see it there. But I, I do think that in terms of, you know, episode five being my, my least favorite, it's actually my favorite episode. I really liked episode five. I really liked just how it sort of told Jadis' story, and I really liked how Rick and Michonne were just in the woods. Like, it felt like a classic Walking Dead episode. Now, again, you know, episode four, is that like a top ten episode? Yeah. Is episode five a top ten episode? No. But it is my favorite. And I know it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but I just like those episodes where it feels like classic Walking Dead. Like... It just, for me personally, that's sort of just like my, I don't know, I find that so comforting watching episodes like that. You know, that's why I really liked episode three of Dead City. Like, it's just those moments where you just spend time with the characters and you learn a lot and it's just relaxing, you know, and it's like a nice episode. So that's kind of, that's why to me personally, episode five was my favorite, even though I know that like when you look at episode four and, you know, what we learned and just everything behind it, like it's obviously for sure a top 10. I can see that. Kune, who's a better character, Red or Roomba? Um, oh man. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I'm gonna say Roomba because I don't know who Red is really. I know the character was in episode five, but I just don't remember the character. Like, I didn't pay attention to any of the side characters in that episode. I, I really didn't. Q&A, do you think we could still see Morgan in some way? Yes, for sure. I definitely still think we could see Morgan. I could see him popping up in like a post credit scene or something like that. Definitely. You know, I think that a way to bring him back and make a season two really exciting. I mean, 
That's the thing, though, is like at this point, I'm starting to think that it won't be like that based off of some of the responses to how this episode plays out. But it's also one of those things where, I don't know, I feel like they could definitely do another season because it seems like they're going to. But I don't know, for some reason, this finale seems mixed. And we've seen some responses to that in the past where people have talked about the ending and there's a lot of emotion and all that, but some people are definitely not liking it or they're very mixed on the episode. And I've seen a lot from a lot of early reviewers that are just like, eh, I don't know about that. You know, like, I don't know if that's because maybe they stay, right? Like, that's sort of been my interpretation of it all is because a lot of people want them to go back to Alexandria. I'm assuming they probably don't. And in this episode, they just stay at the CRM and maybe even Rick and Michonne have to like separate. So in a sense, it's, it's just frustrating because you've watched the whole season and now you're back where you started. Although kind of in a different place because they reunited and there's a lot more. And definitely there's a setup for a season two and they, maybe they saved something or I don't know. Like I don't really know what it is, but it just seems like people aren't really the happiest about it. And I think that Morgan showing up, I think, would obviously fix that. But I don't know. I, I really don't know. We'll have to wait and see. We're like only a couple days away now, right? Q&A, is it possible for there to be something on Judith and RJ such as a radio transmission or a note of some sort? I feel like we would have to know something about them at some point. I mean, they are Rick and Michonne's children. I, I think that, like, I guess you mean in terms of, like, will there be something in terms of seeing those characters? I, I think we will see the characters at some point. I wouldn't, like, like this is the thing. I, I think that they could reunite with them in the finale here and still do a season two. I don't think the end game of them reuniting with their children, uh, or I guess I don't think that's the end game anymore. I think that the end game is just going to be some sort of peace or whatever, but I would prefer them to reunite with all the characters sooner and then just have more of a story with all of them for a while and then end that arc, right? Um, I could see them doing something like that. So yeah, Judith and RJ, I could see them coming back at some point here, but it just, it really depends because of, uh, you know, the, the actors too, like they're getting older, right? And that's the thing, you wait a couple more years, kids age really fast, right? Like for us, five years, you know, go by and we don't really change much, but for kids, five years is a big, big difference. So, you know, if they're waiting to do like a season two or a season three, like that could honestly, like the characters could be adults at that point. And so then do you have to recast or do you just make the timeline that much later, which I feel like They'll probably just do that. q and do you think the Echelon briefing will involve the CRM informing Rick about everything relevant we've seen in the Walking Dead universe concerning the CRM so far, including the incident at their New York research facility with the World Beyond group that resulted in the gas being destroyed and their plan to decimate Portland being disrupted? I, I, I don't know about that part. I think the Echelon briefing might be more to do with like um, some stuff that, you know, that they are trying to do. I don't think it's going to be related to Portland, though, because there's a shot of Michonne in uh, in a room where it looks like she's getting like a briefing or it's not really a briefing, but it, there's like a meeting of like, we're going to do this. We're going to attack Portland and do this and that. I don't think Rick is here. I think Rick is getting the briefing when he's alone with with uh, Major General Beale. So I think what Michonne is seeing is just like a plan they're trying to do because there is like a secret plan. There are things that they do that no one else knows about. But the overall goal and a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, they're not going to be saying in that meeting that Michonne's in, right? Rick's going to find that out like just by himself. So I think that it's going to be separate. And that's my thing too is like the ending of World Beyond was them destroying all the gas and stuff, you know, to stop them from attacking Portland. I hope that the finale here of The Ones Who Live isn't the same thing. Because if it's the same plot, uh, <laughs> I, I will definitely be a little disappointed in that. Q&A, do you think the Commonwealth uh, could be brought up in the Echelon briefing as another surviving city on the continent? I could see them bringing the Commonwealth up. Uh, it would, you know, I mean, I don't know. Like, I could see them bringing it up. And then for us, we would be like freaking out about it. But for Rick, it's so irrelevant because he doesn't know anything about the Commonwealth, right? So... That's why I don't know if they would bring that up in the scene, because for Rick, it's like irrelevant. But I don't know. Again, for us fans, we'd be really excited, right? Q&A, do you think Gabriel will reunite with Rick and Michonne? I personally don't think so. Like eventually, yes. But in the finale here, no, I don't see it. Q&A, do you think the CRM are in business with uh, the Commonwealth? I know logically CRM should have had them on their radar. But if so, why haven't they wiped them out like they, they did uh, to Omaha? and attempted to do with Portland, considering Commonwealth has a significantly smaller population than the other two communities mentioned, they could do it rather easy, any theories. I think that it's more because the Commonwealth operates on its own. That's my assumption, because I think they've talked about Omaha and Portland 
you know, just wasting a lot of their resources and they're sort of, you know, they're, I think they've just had enough of that. I don't know. That, that's sort of my interpretation of it in terms of the, yeah, the Commonwealth. I think that they do just sort of like, they could get supplies by the CRM for sure. But obviously that, that storyline that they really teased that in season 11. And then it just ended up being something entirely different, which is very, which is very, just, I don't know, very upsetting for sure. But I think that, um, yeah, they know of the Commonwealth. I feel pretty confident in that. But as for anything else, yeah, I don't know. It definitely is really weird. I mean, they must know of a lot of other communities. That's sort of the only explanation I think that you can make there is that there's just a lot of other communities, right? And they can't just go around and destroy all of them, right? But I'm going to leave it here. Again, thank you guys so much for all of your questions. There's a lot more questions here, so... I will obviously get to that uh, tomorrow and answer all of that. So again, thank you so much for all of your guys' questions. I uh, hope you guys all enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.